Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna take a look at this thing right here, which is the Lenovo MS75Q Gen 2 Tiny, and specifically this has an AMD Ryzen CPU. But you cannot take this AMD Ryzen CPU and put it into an HP machine because this CPU is vendor locked to Lenovo. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what AMD PSB is. I'm gonna explain why Lenovo's implementation of it here is actually a little different than what we've seen previously. I wanna also just get your feedback because frankly, I'd love to hear what you guys think of it. And I'm also gonna share some of my opinion. Now you may have a totally different opinion, that's cool. But it is a great use of the comment section down below. Now, the first thing that we definitely need to go do is talk about the system. So this is a Lenovo Think Center M75Q Gen 2 Tiny. That's quite a mouthful. But we've also done the Gen 1 version of the system and the Gen 2 version of the system. The previous Gen 2 one, though, it had the Ryzen Pro 4000 series processor. This is the 5000 series. I have been waiting in absolutely just a long time to be able to get one of these. I think I ordered one back in like 2021 and it never arrived. I think they canceled my order. And so I was actually able to get this system from, I think, a major distributor tech data. If you don't know, if you're outside the US, you don't know tech data, the big distributor. And so I was finally able to go and get one of these systems. It has taken a long time, but we're going to cover this in a full Project Tiny Mini micro review. But I thought that this was such a big topic that I didn't really want to like kind of go into AMD PSB like in the middle of that review, because then it would be uh, like a crazy long video about like why you can't replace the processor. So I thought that was kind of weird. And so we're actually pulling that out and we're going to talk about it here. Now, you may have heard me say AMD PSB, and that stands for Platform Secure Boot. So we definitely covered a couple times. We covered it when we found that Dell was using it specifically in their AMD Epic servers, because uh, this is a AMD feature. They use it in their servers to vendor lock CPUs, and that was causing a lot of challenges even back in the Naples generation, so the Epic 7001 series. And the next time that we talked about it was also in early 2021, when we found that AMD was doing the same thing on the Ryzen Threadripper Pro series processors. And Lenovo, of course, had the first workstation based on the Threadripper Pro, and they were actually doing it there. And in case you're wondering, this is a Lenovo Think System SR655, which is a 2U single socket AMD Epic system. And this also uses AMD PSB. Okay, yeah, that was definitely getting pretty heavy. So uh, I stuck it behind me back there because uh, holding that was gonna be silly. Now we are gonna do a review of that Lenovo server and actually tell you why Lenovo is basically giving that server away for free. But that also uses AMD PSB. So it is something that we've seen several times in the industry. What we really haven't encountered it until today is that PSB vendor locking CPUs specifically on the Ryzen, so the lower end processor. They've always been a socket SP3 processor. We've seen the vendor locking, but now it's part of AM4. And so let's get into what it is. So to understand AMD PSB, you have to kind of take a step back and look at like what AMD's architecture is. And specifically, especially on the server side, you'll see that you don't have a platform controller hub like you would have on a desktop chipset. You just have the Epic CPU. And what that practically means is that AMD needs to go put their security offering on the CPU itself. They cannot go put it into the platform controller hub because it just doesn't exist on systems that are like, you know, AMD systems that are AMD Epic systems. So basically AMD has like one die, they have to go and leverage that die across all of their different offerings. And in doing so, they basically have to have this secure processor in all of their offerings. And that's kind of like why everything's there. Now, the AMD secure processor is actually a pretty important part of the AMD architecture. It uses an ARM Cortex A5. So yes, your AMD Ryzen CPU does have an ARM processor in it, which is kind of cool. And specifically, it's there to do a couple of things and a couple of the big things like it does key management and also kind of provides that hardware root of trust. And that hardware root of trust is really at the centerpiece of what Lenovo is trying to do. So in this overall slide, what we really want to look at is this enables hardware validated boot. And that's specifically what we're looking at here because this is a feature that Lenovo is using. I do want to note real quick at the outset of this thing that this is a feature that is optional. A vendor does, a system builder vendor does not have to implement this feature. This is an optional feature that AMD provides as part of, you know, it's big OEM customers have asked for this feature. That's why it's present, but it is up to the vendor, in this case, Lenovo, to enable it or not enable it. Now, this is the actual statement from AMD that AMD provided to us back in 2020 on AMD PSB. So this is the official statement on what PSB is. Now, I'm not going to read the entire thing. I'll put it up here and you can read through it, pause if you want to. But just the high level version of what this is, is basically 
the AMD Ryzen CPU has a secure processor, it has a secure root of trust, it then creates a secure chain between that processor and the system, in this case, the Lenovo systems, BIOS and firmware. And then it's able to go and take that and go all the way into the secure boot loader process that you would have going into the OS. And so the whole idea with this is that by having this set up, you have some level of security that you don't have to really worry about, you know, if a system got tampered with between the factory and when you go and open it up. The key to the vendor locking though, comes in the second paragraph. And the way that AMD PSB actually works is that there are one-time programmable fuses in the processor itself. Now, all AMD processors are shipped from the factory with these field programmable fuses all intact. But what happens is, as part of this PSB initiation process, you basically have the vendor, in this case, Lenovo, will go and blow these one-time you know, field programmable fuses, and they basically are blowing them to correspond with their you know, cryptographic signing of their BIOS. And that's basically how they're able to say like, hey, you know, this AMD processor only works in this Lenovo system. That's kind of part of that process. And what that practically means is that this processor right here does not work if I go put it into an HP system. And what really prompted us to even find this is that back in December of 2021, we got a uh, notes in the comments in our videos. We also got a note on Twitter from D who might be watching this video, hopefully say hi if you are. And D basically said, hey, I tried swapping in a new CPU to the system and it said, hey, are you gonna vendor lock your CPU? And here's a little Twitter screenshot of that. So I do wanna give credit to D for kind of figuring this out. And we actually did try taking this CPU, put it in an HP system and it did not boot because PSB was enabled from the factory on the system. And so we were basically hosed when we got the CPU. But there is some misinformation in terms of what's floating around online about AMD PSB. And I wanna clear that up real quick. So one really common one is when we say vendor lock, we're not saying motherboard lock or system lock necessarily. And what I mean by that is this CPU, you could take out and put into another motherboard. So if you had another M75Q Gen 2 Tiny and you wanted to go take this out and put it in that system, you can still get it to boot. Some folks will say it's only locked to the specific motherboard, but that's definitely not the case. And the reason for that really makes sense, right? Like if you have a whole bunch of these systems in the field and you have to go and service them, it becomes pretty expensive if you have to go and replace a you know couple hundred dollars CPU every time. But it's much cheaper to go and just pull out the motherboard, put a new motherboard in, replace the CPU and all that kind of stuff. And by the way, taking a CPU out of here it takes me about 42 seconds or so. So it's not actually a very hard process to go and reclaim, especially if you're gonna go and save a couple hundred bucks on it. But locking this CPU to a Lenovo system actually has some big impacts. Because if you look at the CPU ex from the exterior, you look at this thing and you would have no idea that this is locked to a Lenovo system. I mean, there's no visual indicator that says these field programmable fuses are blown, but I think where some of the confusion really comes in, it's like, if you look at this processor, all it says here is it's an AMD Ryzen 5 Pro 56, 50 GE processor, it doesn't say that, hey, this is locked to Lenovo systems. There's no visual indicator about that. So what that practically means is that there is a kind of a chilling effect on being able to upgrade CPUs and swap CPUs. And it kind of comes in two forms, right? So we have some users that will go out and buy a Project Tiny, Tiny Mini Micro Node and then look for an aftermarket CPU, put it in there. And that's kind of really their goal in terms of you know getting these things. And sometimes you, know, you just get a deal on a model and you're like, yeah, that's cool, but I want a better CPU. And the other thing is over time, some of the CPUs because they're consumer uh, socket CPUs, they get to be a lot less expensive. So, you know, maybe two years in you say, hey, it's cool that I have the six core, but maybe I want an eight core processor. I found one for pretty, you know, not a lot of money. Let me go get that one. I personally think it's almost always better to just go get the these tiny mini micro nodes with the processor that you want and not try to upgrade them. But I know that there are folks that do that. But let's work through that scenario real quick though. Let's say you had the HP leak desk and you're like, hey, I wanna really go upgrade my system. I have an AM4 system. I wanna go get one of these CPUs. You go look on eBay, you see, hey, there's a CPU, looks fine. The pins aren't bent, looks great. You go buy it, you put it in your system and it doesn't work. Especially if the seller didn't know about AMD PSB, pulled it out of Lenovo or just got it somehow, right? There are a lot of ways that you could have a CPU that is not marked like, hey, this was in a Lenovo PSB system. And so it's vendor locked to Lenovo. Like you can't use it in an HP system. And so like, you know, as you're the buyer, you're like, hey, this is, this is terrible. The CPU doesn't work. The seller may have tested it in a Lenovo system, been like, yeah, of course it worked. I don't know what you're talking about, right? And you can see how like that whole chain becomes very confusing. And so I definitely think that if you are selling any of these AMD CPUs, and you do have PSB installed in any of these systems, you should find some way to mark 
like just put Sharpie on the side or something like that and just say like, hey, this was in a Lenovo system. I think that's kind of a good idea. So that way you protect yourself and save everybody all that kind of hassle. But the other thing is on the flip side of that, a lot of people that go and look to upgrade their tiny mini micro nodes, they'll go buy these systems and they'll say, hey, I can you know buy this new CPU for $300, but I could sell my old one for like $250. So it's not really that much of a delta in terms of being able to go and you know do that upgrade. It's $50, who cares? But what happens when you go to resell that CPU? And if you didn't know about this AMD PSB thing, you're gonna go try reselling that CPU and somebody might go try putting it into an HP thing. And then you have to go deal with that on that end. Does that mean that that Ryzen CPU that was put into a Lenovo system is less valuable than an AMD CPU that was put into another vendor system that doesn't have AMD PSB? I guess it does, right? Because it limits the population that it can actually go in. And on the server side, I mean, let's face it, like those CPUs very rarely get swapped. So I can kind of understand a little bit more there. But on these things that are like AMD Ryzen systems, you can totally see how people will go and, you know, part out these systems or like, you know, when they're going to eBay, people say like, oh, we can still use that CPU. Let's go put that on eBay. And you can definitely see how this will happen in the market. And this definitely has broader impacts than just you know, people that are buying these systems, new upgrading CPUs and stuff like that. Let's kind of think a little bit longer term, maybe like three, four years down the road. Maybe this system makes its way, you know, it's now worth 200 bucks or something like that for the entire system. And maybe it makes its way to a place that doesn't have as high of income that can't be buying, you know, a one liter PC that's 800, 900, a thousand dollars, right? Well, what happens in those cases? Well, are those folks being impacted by the fact that maybe some motherboards have died. So now there's too many CPUs that don't work in the existing motherboards that are out there. I mean, the fact of the matter is that it will put a dent into what happens on kind of that recycling chain and maybe even upcycling chain or something like that. So I don't necessarily think that this is the greenest solution. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. And also what you think could be done in the future to potentially make it a little bit better. Personally, I think since AMD PSB is optional anyway, I wish that there was a way for you to say, okay, well, I'm going to blow all the fuses and make it a CPU, a non PSB enabled CPU. So basically you say, hey, you can have something that's ready to go from the factory. It can go in any system. You can enable PSB if you want on that. But then if you do want to go put into the secondary market, you can go blow all the fuses. It will never be able to go back into a PSB enabled system because we've said, hey, you know, it's been taken out of systems from the factory, so we definitely don't want to secure it anymore. But I think that something like that would be a way that AMD in the future with its partners could say, hey, this would be a way that we can say like, these systems can get resold, you can go trade processors, but if you wanna have a secure system, you are gonna to have to go buy it from an OEM. I personally think that that's a better way to do this because that would both protect the OEM's ability to say, hey, this has been through a secure supply chain and it would also help those that are working on these on the secondary market or whatever. I think that that would help a lot. Now you're right that in that mode, you wouldn't be able to necessarily go and do a like take a a Lenovo system, take the CPU out and put it into an HP thing if you wanted to do that. But I think by the time you're doing that, you know, I think that the idea of having a super secure system is probably not really happening anyway, because you're taking, you know, components from one system, putting it in another. So I don't really have an issue as much in that case with the idea of that if you take it out of a PSB lock system, you can unlock it, but you can't ever put it back into a PSB system. So I just kind of wish that that's the way that this was done in the future. And hopefully they see this video and they take that feedback. But of course, that's just my idea. If you guys have better ideas, I would love to hear them. And while we're wrapping up on this, I just want to say thank you to Dee for actually going out and being an avid reader of and watcher of our Tiny Mini Micro series and coming up with this and bubbling this up to me. I think that's super awesome. Thank you for all your work on this. That was great. Thank you so much. I also just want to say I do definitely want to read the comments and see what you all think about this because personally, I have an opinion, but I may be totally off base and I'd love to hear what you have to say. And of course, stay tuned because we are definitely going to have a review of this M75Q Gen 2 with this new Ryzen 5000 series processor. So we're definitely going to have that. We also have some really cool HP units that we're going to be doing. In fact, some of them I'm like excited out of my mind for them to actually get here. Uh, hopefully they they get shipped, uh, I don't know. But if they do, I'm very excited to be able to show those to you. So Project Tiny Mini Micro will live on. And hey, if you like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe, turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.